So the three anthems completed, Italian, American, and British. And now Bowser Edwards prepares to make this second defense of the title. His career has taken a joyous turn since August 9 last year, when in Atlantic City in the United States, he was pulled out of a non-title fight with the man who was then the WBC junior lightweight champion, Alexis Arguello, after eight rounds. He'd never been down, but he was beginning to get hurt, and Mickey Duff pulled him out. Well, we've seen Arguello in Britain since then. We know that he took Jim Watts' WBC lightweight title just a few weeks ago, and now Boza Edwards holds the title that Arguello used to hold. An American referee tonight, well known to us, Arthur McCanty, and three judges sitting outside the ring who will do the scoring. The referee doesn't score under WBC rules. Navaretti, who speaks uh, very little English indeed, being presented with a garland before the fight gets underway. That sad Sam Ichino there, that extraordinary, mournful face, one of the most famous managers in the world. Sad Sam Ichino's. And now Buzz Edwards gets his garland, his medal. So, Italian ceremonial complete. They strip off and prepare for the fight. So tonight's fight over 15 rounds here in the open air in Via Reggio, this resort on the Mediterranean, just 20 miles north of Pisa. Rolando Navaretti, the Filipino who's now based in Hawaii, liberally tattooed, making his second attempt to win this title, having already fought Alexis Arguello for it, the former champion, in Puerto Rico in April last year, and was stopped in four rounds then, getting both his eyes cut, the right one much worse than the left. And you'll see when they come out that Navaretti will be an inch or two shorter than the champion. Cornelius Bosa Edwards, who's fighting as much to retain the title, also as to establish himself in his adopted country of Britain. Colorful ring, colorful scene, a warm night, and an exciting championship, we hope, in prospect. 15 rounds for the World Boxing Council's Junior Lightweight Championship. That's nine stone four. Jose Edwards weighs nine, three and a quarter. And Navaretti is just half a pound heavier. And Arthur McCanty, the American referee, calling him to the center for the final instructions. Britain's only world boxing champion at the moment, about to defend the title again. Two South Fours facing each other. Jose Edwards beaten just twice as a pro. And Navaretti, the Filipino comes with the reputation of being durable, with a strong right hand, and a particularly good body puncher. The original opponent, Rafael Limon, is also a southpaw. So Bosa Edwards, who'd been training to fight another southpaw, didn't have to change training tactics. Quick punch over the top from Navaretti. Seemed to take Bozo Edwards by surprise. And again. Corny is, um, well, he's a very fine boxer. He's a neat, nimble mover. But he can get drawn into hard battles, as his world title fights have proved. And Navaretti is beginning to attack hard with the right hand. Beautiful left hand 
from Bosa Edwards. He's been superbly confident and relaxed in training, the champion. And he looks very, very sharp and fit. Snapping right hand leads from the champion. We should be looking on Navarrete's face to see if there's any further trouble. He's got Bowser Edwards in a bit of trouble. With some slashing looks. That was a good attack. seen already to show us that Navaretti is a dangerous challenger. And Edwards is going to have to pull out his best boxing here. That was a good opening round by the challenger, no doubt about that. And that little attack there that he set up uh, towards the end of the round will almost certainly have won in that round on the judges' cards, I would think. 24 years old, North American champion, having won that uh, title earlier this year, beating Johnny Sato in May. He's had 45 fights, 34 wins, 4 draws and 7 defeats. He's been stopped three times, and he's won 15 of his fights, but uh, just under half of his wins inside the distance. Bose Redwoods with his manager Mickey Duff imploring him to get going. And Navarrete's corner must be well pleased with the way he started. He produced one or two very dangerous looking hooks in that opening run that really did spell trouble for Bose Edwards, who was a little slow to get going. Akanti getting the seconds up, ready for the second round. Navarrete is certainly two inches shorter, at least, and correspondingly shorter in reach. But he found no trouble getting his punches into the head of, and the body of the champion in that first round. Tremendous form to win this title against Rafael Limon early this year. And then made a very, very successful defense of it against a dangerous fighter, Bobby Chacon. And this man, too, is extremely dangerous. And the champion is getting caught too often. Won't need anybody to tell him that. good a start and get too confident he might have trouble winning the rounds back later on Jose Edwards will be hoping to see some signs of damage on the face of Navarrete, who's known to cut, and Aguayo cut him over both eyes 18 months ago. Rosalind was just beginning to take a little grip on this. Getting in first with his punches now. Still 
still taking too many of these hooks to the head for comfort. likely to be a very tough fight for both men. Well, that was a better round, the second round for Bozer Edwards, although at times he was still allowing this man to get at him with quick hooks to the head. And he looked just, again, Bozer Edwards, the reactions looked to be slightly slow. He was taking rather too many punches and allowing the man to take the initiative away from him from time to time. But he set up one or two good attacks himself, and occasionally Navarrete looked a bit puzzled by the speed the punches were coming at him. But here's a tough little fighter. He's been around a bit, 45 fights behind him. Turned pro in 1973, only three days after his 16th birthday. Turned pro in the Philippines and then moved to Hawaii in 1979 and has been there since. Round three coming up. Bosa Edwards takes the name of Edwards from the man who brought him out of Uganda, taught him to box in Kampala in Uganda, then brought him to England when Idi Amin took over in Uganda. And Boza Edwards added the man's name in gratitude. And Jack Edwards, that uh, ex tea planter from Uganda, is here at the ringside watching his protege tonight. These are sharp exchanges. One low one there from Navaretti. Edwards not leading off too much. Again, slips under that uh, double-handed attack from Navarrete. And this little Filipino is giving the champion too much trouble. He's so quick with that right-left combination. Bozer Edwards simply can't move away from them. In fact, his footwork is not all that lively tonight. He went right down to the knees of the challenger. And Navarrete suddenly seems to have wilted under that. He thought he was one cracking hook, and you could see it almost unhinging his knees. And Navarrete now is in real trouble on the ropes in this, the third round. And he comes off the ropes and he clings and takes a breather. And that one punch has changed the whole look of the thing. And Bozer Edwards clearly feels now that this might be the moment to try and finish it all. But he's only got about 20 seconds left in this round. And Bozo Edwards is badly cut. He's come out of that with a terrible cut over his left eye. So the champion now has trouble. This thing is going from one way to the other. And the champion now has got real problems. That is an awful cut over the left eye. In the worst possible place, and it's bleeding very badly. Time now may be short for Bozo Edwards. And that really is the most appalling cut he's got over the left eye. And he caught that in the last 15 seconds of that round. 
having early and the other man's cut as well now as they part we can see that Navaretti is cut over the right eye and Boza Edwards is cut over the left eye so that both men are are cut and McCanty is explaining something some action of his to the American uh, TV team here they're querying something about the timing of that round so what drama we've had we've had that one tremendous hooking punch from Boza Edwards about a minute from the end of that round when he sent a shiver right down the legs of Navaretti and the Filipino looked as though he might even go down and now both men are cut Navaretti over the right eye Boza Edwards over the left as they come up for the fourth round and of the two cuts I would have thought that Boza Edwards looks rather the worst Now there's no telling what will happen in this fight. They've stopped the bleeding on both men. Both these men now looking for just the one big punch that will get them out of trouble. Because time may be short for both of them. Both Edwards is bleeding again. And so is the challenger, but not quite as badly. And Boza Edwards must be feeling that he might have not much time left to do this in. And he's bleeding quite badly again, the champion. McCant is looking at the cut. Navaretti has cut too. The blood runs down the side of his face. Actually, although the cut is bleeding badly on Boza Edwards' face, the blood, in fact, is running down the side of his face. He's hurt by a left hook. What a fight this is. It swings first one way, then the other. And the champion is really hurt. Oh, he's got him. He's threatened to do it. And he's put the champion on the floor. And George Francis is pushing his hand through the ropes, telling him to take the longest possible count he can. But he's got up at five, I think. And McCanty counted to eight. Compulsory eight count. What a fight this is. Round four. And Boza Edwards in all sorts of trouble. Cut, been on the floor. Now can he summon up a punch to turn it round yet again? An amazing fight, and he's got him again. And a right hand looks to me as though it might be the finish. He's looking into the face of his men, and he can't even stay on his knees on the floor. His count is nine, and he's up at nine. But he doesn't look to me as though he knows where he is, but we're near the end of the round. Can he survive it? This is now a try for survival and nothing else. Just waiting for the bell to ring. Picky Duck is screaming at him from the corner. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And he looks around at Mickey and I don't I don't think Bozer Edwards knows really where he is. Some instinct is telling him to move his feet, and there's the bell, and he's got through it. He has survived it. And he went over to Navarrete at the end of that round and tapped him on the arm as though to congratulate him. I honestly don't think he really knows what he's doing. McCanty looks at his face and has walked away. He's going to let it go on by the look of things. And that corner now are working so desperately on both Edwards. Down twice in that round, both times from really very good punches. He was taking punches to the head early on. And that right hand of Navarrete's has proved to be a real danger punch. They're trying to stop the bleeding and they're trying to bring him round. And McCanty is over there again having another close look at him to see if he's fit enough to come out for the fifth. And there must be some doubt whether he is. And he's nodding his head furiously. 
nodding his head furiously at McCandy to say, I'm all right, I'm all right. And he's coming out for the fifth. Very nearly an ex-champion in the fourth round. Now, if it can get out of this, it will be a miracle. Go, man, go! Edwards shorts, which were white to start with, have now turned scarlet from his own blood. Now somehow or other, he's got to keep moving those legs, which he was he wasn't moving them early on at all. And only some sort of instinct for survival made him work his legs at the end of that drastic fourth round. Now he needs to move them again. At all costs now, he must keep out of trouble until he can get back into this fight, if he can. He started a firm favorite to win this, and now it looks like 10 to one against. These two-handed hooking punches from this little southpaw from the Philippines are wreaking terrible havoc, and he's got him again. Right hand. That's the right, big right hand once again. And I don't think Boza is... Oh, yes, he is. He's stirring. Eight. He's not going to make it. He's counted out on his knees. And we have a new champion, Rolando Navarrete, the Hawaiian-based Filipino who can hardly contain himself with joy. He can't believe what's happened and neither composer Edwards or any of his corner. It is the most terrible night for the champion who's made his second defense here. He's with McKenzie, and he's saying, I'm all right to McKenzie. But he's not all right. He's lost his cycle, and he's half lost his senses here in Via Reggio tonight. And a new champion is being crowned. And Boza Edwards has lost it in the most dramatic way possible. He never really ever got into the fight. He had a reasonable second and third round, but was never really the governor. And those double-handed hooks of this 24-year-old Southpaw Filipino, Rolando Navarrete, have proved to be altogether too good for Boza Edwards, who's never, never been beaten like that before as a pro. That's only his third defeat. His first defeat early in his career was on cuts. They pulled him out of the fight last year with Alexis Arguello, the non-title fight, because they felt he was taking too much. And tonight he's taken more than too much. He really has. He put his head in the way of everything. And the title went down the drain. Well, a triumphant night for the little man from the Philippines. Navarrete, who proved himself to be a very, very good challenger tonight and will be a good champion. That's his 46th professional fight, his 35th win. And that is most certainly one of the, the worst setbacks of British boxing in recent years. Because now Britain no longer has any world boxing champions, and not so long ago we had three of them. The announcement of the Filipinos' triumph can hardly be heard here. And Boza Edwards on his feet. He looks reasonably all right, but he really did take a pummeling there. In those fourth and fifth rounds, it was all too much. Now, Baretti is declared the winner in the fifth round of a remarkable world title fight here on the shores of the Mediterranean in Via Reggio. A beautiful night, but a disastrous one for Boza Edwards. Hey, hey. Corny, yeah. I don't know what to say to you. How do you feel? Um, I feel very upset about this guy because I'm... Um, do you feel all right in yourself? I feel all right, yeah. I, feel, I, feel, I, feel. I was cat and uh, the blood was looking in the eye. And all I could see was, was, was one eye. But I wanted to carry on. And then the other fellow got cat. But he was throwing big shots, and I couldn't see because of one eye. 
and he caught me with a good shot, and you know I I was counted out. Early on in the fight, he caught you a one or two good punches. Yeah, yeah he's a very close puncher, and I felt those, and uh, he caught me with another one that put me down. I managed to get up, but uh, the blood was dripping in my eye too bad, and he was hard to see with one eye. Is he the hardest punch you've ever had? Yeah, the hardest punch. Good. I could beat him and I'll beat him in an return fight, which I'm determined to do. You want to go um, with him again, do you? Yeah, I want to fight him again. But that it's one of those fights that if you catch and you could only you you're only using one eye, I managed to do my best and he got cut. But my eye was pretty bad. And all I could see was with one eye and he caught me with terrific shots. And you know, I was kind of there. I couldn't uh, get up with the other. You know, Thanks to see very well. You even went around sort of that's it. behind the crowd. I was determined to, you know, to win this fight, but I knew the eye was dripping in, and all I could see was just one eye. It was hard, you know. I'm very sorry to all my fans, but I promise you I'll be back. Mickey right. Duff, what have you got to say to us? Well, I'm obviously very disappointed. Um, I have never seen him get hit with those kind of punches before, and I think it was part... It was, a, it was certainly the major problem was the cut. I don't know when it happened. There seemed to be a scuffle and a clinch, and he came out and he was cut, and nobody saw how it happened. Obviously, I'm very disappointed. I know he's capable of far better than he showed tonight, and it's my job now to do whatever I can to get them in again. I'm sure the other fellow got a chance out of line, and I'm sure he'll be sportsman enough and businessman enough because it's a good, attractive fight.